Deep beneath Ethiopia's vast and arid eastern plains, buried under layers of ancient rock and sand, lies a hidden fortune. It's not gold or diamonds, but something far more volatile and potentially transformative, trillions of cubic feet of natural gas. For decades, this immense energy resource remained a geological secret, a whisper of potential in a land of stark beauty and immense challenges. Now, an audacious plan is underway to unlock it. A colossal steel artery, a $4 billion pipeline, is designed to stretch from the heart of Ethiopia to the strategic coast of Djibouti. This isn't just an infrastructure project, it's the Horn of Africa's biggest energy swing in a generation. If it succeeds, it could fundamentally redraw the region's economic map, creating new alliances, new wealth, and a new future for millions. But the path from desert to deep water is fraught with risk. It's a high-stakes gamble involving immense capital, complex geopolitics, and formidable engineering. Let me take you inside Ethiopia's gas gamble to understand the discovery, the engineering, the economics, and the enormous challenges that lie ahead. Our story begins not with modern machinery, but with the pioneering spirit of the 1970s. The Ogaden Basin, a sprawling, semi-arid expanse in Ethiopia's Somali region, had long been a frontier. It was here that international oil companies, armed with the era's best technology, began to probe the earth. Seismic crews sent shockwaves deep into the ground, listening for the echoes that would reveal the secrets of the subterranean geology. Their data painted a promising picture. They identified two significant natural gas fields, Caleb and Hilala. The initial estimates were tantalizing, suggesting a world-class resource waiting to be tapped, but geology was the easy part. The dream of developing these fields soon collided with the harsh realities of the late 20th century. Ethiopia was plunged into a period of intense political upheaval and regional conflict. The Ogaden itself became a contested territory. For any major investor, the risks were simply too high. The capital required to build the necessary infrastructure was immense, and the political instability made such a long-term investment untenable. The gas stayed in the ground and the discovery sites fell silent, leaving behind little more than rusted equipment and a frozen dream. Decades passed. Then, in the 2010s the narrative shifted. A new player arrived with the capital and the ambition to succeed, where others had failed. The Chinese-backed consortium, Poly GCL, Armed with modern technology and significant financial backing, they didn't just restart the project, they reimagined it. Fresh seismic surveys provided a much higher resolution picture of the reservoirs. New appraisal wells were drilled, confirming and expanding upon the initial discoveries. The data suggested a resource of around 8 trillion cubic feet, enough to fuel a major export operation for decades. Poly GCL's plan was comprehensive. Connect the dots from the landlocked desert fields to the global energy market via deep water ports. And that required one thing above all else. A mega pipeline. Picture a steel artery, 30 inches in diameter, designed to withstand immense pressure. It begins its journey in the remote gas fields of Caleb and Hilala. From there, it snakes over 700 kilometers, a monumental feat of engineering across some of Africa's most challenging landscapes. The route climbs over rugged windswept plateaus, where construction crews must carve paths through ancient rock formations. It crosses vast, sun-scorched deserts, where temperatures can soar and heat shimmer distorts the horizon. Finally, it descends from the Ethiopian highlands towards the shimmering Red Sea, dropping to the coast of neighboring Djibouti. But the pipeline is just the conduit. The real magic happens at either end. At the source, in the Ogaden, a sprawling gas processing plant is the first critical step. Here, the raw gas extracted from the earth is treated. Impurities like water, sulfur and other contaminants are stripped out to prevent corrosion and meet export specifications. This process stabilizes the gas, making it safe for its long journey. Along the 700-kilometer mainline, a series of powerful compressor stations act as the heart of the system. These stations are strategically placed to repressurize the gas, maintaining the momentum needed to push billions of cubic feet of energy eastward, day in and day out. The pipeline's destination is a state-of-the-art liquefied natural gas, or LNG, terminal at Damerjog, on Djibouti's coast. This is where the gas undergoes a remarkable transformation. Inside a cryogenic liquefaction train, the gas is chilled to a staggering minus 162 degrees Celsius. At this extreme temperature, the gas transforms into a liquid, shrinking to 1 600th of its original volume. This incredible reduction in size is what makes it economical to transport natural gas across oceans. 
the now liquid gas is transferred to massive heavily insulated storage tanks ready for the final leg of its journey. From there specialized LNG tankers, essentially giant thermos flasks of the sea, dock at the terminal's jetty. Giant loading arms connect to the ships, and the super-chilled liquid is carefully pumped aboard. The entire process, from desert well to ocean-going tanker, is a symphony of complex industrial processes. The price tag for this entire system, the wells, the processing plant, the pipeline, and the LNG terminal, is estimated at a colossal $4 billion. The goal is to produce and export millions of tons of LNG per year. At today's market prices, that translates into a potential revenue stream of billions of dollars annually. So why does this matter so much, particularly for Ethiopia? The answer is simple, foreign currency. For years, Ethiopia has faced a chronic shortage of hard currency like the US dollar, which is essential for paying for critical imports, from medicine and machinery to fuel and food. If this pipeline delivers on its promise, a steady flow of hard dollar earnings from LNG sales will pour into the national treasury. This could be a game changer, allowing the country to finance its development, stabilize its currency and reduce its reliance on foreign debt. The project also promises a significant employment boost. Thousands of jobs are created during the construction phase. But more importantly, it will require a permanent, skilled workforce for its long-term operation, from field hands in the Ogaden and engineers at the compressor stations to highly trained technicians at the Djibouti port. Beyond direct revenues, major infrastructure projects like this have a powerful ripple effect. New roads are built to service the pipeline corridor, connecting remote communities. Power lines are erected, bringing electricity to areas that have never had it. Small service hubs, workshops, supply depots, and local businesses tend to spring up along the route, creating pockets of economic growth far from the capital, Addis Ababa. And there's a domestic dividend. While the primary goal is export, a portion of the gas can be diverted for use within Ethiopia. This could fuel new power plants, providing more reliable electricity for a rapidly growing population. It could also serve as a key ingredient for producing fertilizer, boosting agricultural productivity, and potentially lowering the country's reliance on expensive imported fuels for industry and transport. Zooming out, the regional stakes are immense. The project solidifies the powerful economic partnership between Ethiopia and China. China's involvement through PolyGCL brings not just the crucial financing and engineering expertise, but also a guaranteed long-term customer for the LNG, de-risking the project significantly. For Djibouti, the benefits are equally profound. Already a critical logistics and maritime hub on the Red Sea, the country is now adding a major energy chapter to its story. The project generates substantial revenue through port fees and transit tariffs. It also anchors the development of a new industrial corridor centered on LNG, attracting further investment and cementing its status as the gateway to East Africa. For Ethiopia, a landlocked nation, exporting energy is not just about money, it's about strategic leverage. It gives the country a more powerful voice in the horn of Africa's crucial trade lanes and deepens its economic and diplomatic ties with major energy importers in the Middle East and Asia. It diversifies the economy away from agriculture and positions Ethiopia as a key player in the global energy transition. But for all its promise, the road ahead is not smooth. The project is laden with significant risks that cannot be ignored. First and foremost is security. The pipeline's route passes through parts of eastern Ethiopia that have historically been fragile and prone to conflict. A 700-kilometer pipeline is an incredibly vulnerable asset, nearly impossible to guard end-to-end, -end, making it a potential target for sabotage or unrest. Then there are the market and financial risks. Mega projects like this often face delays and cost overruns. Financing timelines can slip, and the global price of natural gas is notoriously volatile, swinging with geopolitical events and shifts in demand. A sustained drop in LNG prices could threaten the project's profitability. Furthermore, the world is increasingly focused on environmental, social and governance, or ESG criteria. Concerns about methane leaks, a potent greenhouse gas, and the potential impact on fragile coastal ecosystems in Djibouti raise the bar for operational oversight and environmental protection. Industry analysts and investors keep repeating the same critical checklist for success. Stable politics and unwavering government support are non-negotiable. The funding must be credible and secure for the long haul. There must be genuine buy-in from the local communities along the pipeline's path. And finally, the operational execution must be airtight, with no room for error. 
If any one of these pillars wobbles, the entire project schedule and its economic viability could be thrown into jeopardy. If it works though, the impact could be truly historic. This single project has the potential to redefine East Africa's energy future. It could transform Ethiopia from a net energy importer into a significant energy exporter, fundamentally altering its economic destiny. It would bind the Horn of Africa to global energy flows in a way we have never seen before, creating an interdependent economic ecosystem built on a shared resource, desert gas, steel pipe, and liquid cargo. It's a simple formula for a complex and ambitious vision, one line drawn across the map that could shift the fortunes of an entire region. The world is watching, and so am I.